Hey guys, welcome to SD Drain Ditch Training 2024. My name is Luke Halbach and, and I will be going through uh, the ditch software with you guys, showing you guys some of the features and, and how to uh, use all of the uh, different features that you might uh, see fit for your operation. And uh, first, my name, oh, I'm gonna break in right now and say, my name's Scott Horvick, I'm with Rust Sales also. Um, and uh, I'm gonna uh, be uh, you guys, the customer, and if there's uh, questions that I have during training, I will pop those out to Luke as we go along. Yeah, that sounds good, Scott. Uh, the first slide here, we've got our PX501 display. This is our new monitor. Well, we've been selling it for about five or six years now. Um, it's been an awesome screen for us. Customers have really liked this, this screen uh, because some of the things that people like about it is the brightness. You can see it uh, even if the sunlight is shining in on it. Um, it is wireless to the controller, so you can uh, set everything up in the cab and not have cables coming up to your monitor. The only cable that would plug into the monitor would be the charging cable. This is a tablet PC, so it does have an internal battery, so you can uh, grab it, you know, run around with it, run around with it if you need, um, because of the internal battery. A thousand nits brightness. That is the um, nice bright screen that we like. But the biggest thing is the wireless capabilities to the controller. All of your GPS stuff plugs into the controller. So if you're running John Deere, Trimble, Ag Leader, all of your cables will plug into the main harness and then will eventually plug into the controller. Then everything is streamed wirelessly to our monitor. The PX5 Rover, this is our in house GPS. It is an RTK uh, GPS. It mounts on the back of your SD drain monitor, as you can see in the picture in the bottom right. And um, it does come with a base station, or it, it can. Uh, you can use external corrections if you have a correction source already. There is a nine pin connector on the side, side of it that um, can take incoming RTCM V3 messages. Uh, but if not, if you don't have that, it does come with a base station. Uh, just give us a call for pricing. We do recommend that you send in your screen, or actually not recommend, we require that you send in your screen for us to install uh, this receiver. PX5R connections, you can see in the bottom right or the picture to the right, uh, we've got four different positions. This is the dual configuration that's shown, but really most guys are buying the single configuration just for ditching. Um, you'll see on position four, you've got your antenna that mounts on the scraper. That's where that plugs in. And then position three is going to be your communications to your base station. So this would be the antenna that mounts on the top of the cab of your tractor. Uh, so you can see the connections here. KMZ files, these are files that you'll get with maps that you get from us or that you purchase through Rust Sales. What it is, it's a map that you can load on uh, your hired hands iPhone or Android using the apps provided. So it's Google Earth or Locus Free. You can see there, that's those are the ones that we, we recommend just because they are free. Um, and you'll load these KMZ files. And you might know your fields, uh, you know, where all the wet spots are, um, places where you might get stuck. But the new guy that you hire, or that comes around once a year might not. Well, this gives you um, a tool that he can use to see, oh, hey, there might be a wet spot coming up. I should maybe be careful. Um, you know, if there's a canopy, like if soybeans, you're spraying soybeans later in the year, uh, and there's a canopy, you can see where those potential wet spots might be. Rust sales service tools, we've got manuals.rustsales.com. This is our help page or a help website that you guys can go to to um, look up things with our, all of our manuals. The install manuals, the operational manuals are all on manuals.rustsales.com. Okay, so open up a Chrome browser or just a, a website browser. Uh, type in sddrain.com. And what you'll do is you go over to the support tab on the right, and then you've got all this these lists of things that you can go to. So troubleshooting, I'm just going to go through this one first. Uh, it's got a list of FAQ, so frequently asked questions that you guys might have. And it's all it is is a collection of the common questions that we get when you guys call in. So uh, registering software, plug it into your 9RX, 
uh, series tractor, hotspot, Android, iPhone. Um, and then the one that I really want to point out is the why don't I have GPS signal? This is probably our number one asked question when you guys call in. Uh, Scott did a really good job of putting together this flow chart. Um, it's like an interactive flow chart that you guys can type or click in and uh, just follow through. So just go through the questions. Are your lights on? Uh, if yes, you know, continue to the next step. Click on the blue. And what it's going to do, it's going to ask you a series of questions and help you troubleshoot or guide you through the troubleshooting process that we would go through uh, with you if you guys had called in. So is it wireless or wired? You can just select it here. And it's going to ask you a series of questions and just go through each one. Uh, and eventually it will get you uh, your solution. Um, or at least give you um, some guidance on what to do next. Uh, then we've got manuals. This is our uh, manuals page. So sddrain.com. So manuals.russsales.com is what it'll take you to. We have the online manuals up on top. So the ditch manual is right here. And if you click on it, it'll bring you to this page where you can actually load or open up a specific part of the manual um, if all you're looking for is specific. So if you want to see your, you know, your Ag Leader 7500 receiver uh, programming or your, you know, John Deere 3000, 6000 settings, just go ahead and click on that. And it's going to bring you to that setup page and tell you exactly how to set up your receiver. And these pages are pretty responsive. So, I mean, if you're, if you, look at it on your phone it should it should make sense um but it's an easy way the online manual is a nice way to take a look at what the manual just like right on your phone um if you do back out of this again um you can see that we do have an opportunity for you to have uh, downloadable pdf manuals are there um as well as like if you misplaced your quick reference guide you could always download one of those and print it off um, so uh, it's a resource for you right there at sddrain.com. And then if we head back to sddrain.com on that one, um, going down to the training page, um, I mean, this is going to have like the training videos like you're watching right now. That's where they're located. Um, uh, there's also uh, What's on the bottom of that one? I'm trying to remember if there's for background maps. If you uh, um, purchase background maps through your agronomist or your dealer or or through Rust Sales, um, the guys at GK Technology, the maps that are provided using the ADMS software, um, it's a resource there on how to read what those particular maps are. And I think the other spot under the support page is going to be the resources. Uh, there's some videos that are there uh, when you first purchase your program um, just to see what comes in the package, the unboxing videos. And then also, uh, if you're looking at installing your um, system, hardware installation, like in a John Deere or with, uh, with John Deere GPS or uh, CNH with uh, uh, Trimble GPS systems, uh, there's a quick video to take a look at and and uh, see how items work. So sddrain.com, just want to let you know that um, if you're looking for support uh, and the guys aren't available, if it's after hours or on the weekend or something like that, um, this is a resource for you to get to to uh, help you uh, continue ditching. We also have our remote support. This is super helpful. We can actually log into your screens and take a look at exactly what you're doing and see exactly what you're talking about. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit harder to explain things over the phone. Um, two people have two different ideas of, of what uh, things are, what things are doing. So if you've got a hotspot on your phone, you can connect that to your monitor and then we can log in and take a look at your screen. The online chat windows, you see the let's chat icon in the bottom right of our, um, our desktop or our, our website. You can click on that let's chat type in any questions you might have um, about you know anything really involving rust sales uh, whether it's new or used inventory on the lot uh, questions about sd drain um, just go ahead and type in the let's chat and we will get your message and there's a chat window also available at sddrain.com it's still in that same spot the lower right hand corner of your screen yeah yep it'll say let's chat 
Remote support hotspots. Here are the Android instructions, and they're all pretty much the exact same. You'll turn your go into your settings portion on your phone, turn your or find your connections. This is Android. Uh, go to mobile hotspot, make sure you turn it on. And then down below, you'll have a password. This is for you. So next, you'll go into your SD drain monitor in the bottom right corner and go to your Wi Fi list. And you'll find your phone in that list. Tap on your phone, hit connect, and then you'll type in this password that is on your phone. And then your, your phone will connect and we'll be able to log in. And we'll just walk you through uh, how to open up the, the support page. Remote support, this is your iPhone instructions. Uh, again, it's the same thing. Go to settings, turn on you know, your, uh, your hotspot. On iPhone, it's allow others to join. Check that on. Here's your Wi-Fi password. There's also a maximize compatibility on some of the newer phones. So go ahead and turn that on as well. And you'll do the exact same thing. Go to your SD drain monitor. Bottom right corner, go to your Wi-Fi settings, pull up the list, find your phone in the list, click on it, hit connect type in your password, and then your phone will connect to the computer. John Deere installation, so guys plugging into their John Deere tractors, you're gonna wanna do this with your tractor off. So when your tractor is off, you'll make your connections to the back. Um, behind the slow moving vehicle signs for most tractors, it's a 10 pin uh, connector. A lot of the times it still has a dust cap on it, um, but you'll connect our cabling to that. If you don't have the, the controller connected, you won't see auto with a line through it, but if the controller is connected, so here you can see the DAC is connected to the tractor, you will see an auto with a line through it on your SCV screen. Uh, in position one and three, that's just how our cabling is laid out by default. So position one and three will have auto with a line through it. Um, and uh, that's how you know your controller is connected. If you're having issues, Make sure you turn the tractor off before you start plugging and unplugging cables to try and troubleshoot things. Um, that's just the best way to do it. So that is your John Deere installation for most tractors, at least for the connection location. Um, in 2023 and newer John Deere four wheel drives, we found that they move the connector to or in, in the articulation. The easiest way to find it is you follow the big harness down from the cab. And then in this articulation joint, they will have this uh, connector right about in this location. Sometimes you do have to dig a little bit to find it, but it will be there on your 2023 uh, and newer four wheel drive tractors. There's probably maybe some carryover stuff where this connector is still up behind the cab, but for the most stuff, most part, uh, the newer tractors are going to be in the, the articulation. Case installation 2010 or older. The connection point is on the outside of the cab, right under the passenger side uh, cab mount. On 2011 or newer, the connector is on the inside of the cab. You open up the big glass door on the passenger side and you dig in the little cubby uh, and find this six pin connector. A, a lot of times on the new tractors, you do have to dig a little bit to find them, but it will be in there. Just make sure um, sometimes guys stuff steering cables in here. So that sometimes there is a, um, a nest of, of cables. So you might have to pull those out at least a little bit to find this connector. And then you'll program your corner post on all of the, I believe 2022 and older tractors, you'll program the corner post. And we do have instructions on that on sddrain.com and go to the manuals uh, section. Here's what your keypad looks like on your armrest. These are the older 1-3 rocker switches. And these are the newer keypad type uh, for your one and three hydraulics. 2023 and newer Magnums, they cleaned up the back of their cabs a little bit. They took all those electronics off, and, but they did leave a wiring harness for connecting to it uh, with our equipment. So uh, find this connector, you know, take the pan, you'll have to take the panel off. It's not just easily, easily accessible, or at least I've found it's not. You have to take the panel off, find this connector, and then make your uh, connection with our cabling. The new case armrest, this is all the AFS Connect cabs. The connection is still in the same location like we went over before, uh, but you'll have to program the screen now. You don't go through the corner post, you go through the 1200 monitor. You'll go to your remotes, click into the auto auxiliary control valve, 
and then you'll turn whichever um, configuration you need on. So if you need both one and or not one and three A and B on, you'll turn both on, and then you'll actually select what valve on the back of the tractor those are plugged into. It's nice because you don't have to. You're not limited. You're not limited to just one and three anymore. You can actually use uh, whatever it is, one through five or one through six hydraulics in the back of your tractor for control. You'll then go through and program, at least these are our instructions, to program this gray keypad for your on-off buttons. If you click on these and they haven't been programmed to a function yet, uh, it'll bring you to the programming page where you can actually select what each of these gray buttons do in your tractor. And you'll assign it to the remote valve, A or B, that you want it to turn on and on. Generic GPS settings. so must be RTK quality GPS. Uh, the, these, these settings right here are more so for um, guys who have some other type of GPS that we don't have a setup page for. We've got setup pages for John Deere, uh, Trimble, Ag Leader, um, Outback, you know, a bunch of different uh, types of GPS. Um, but if you don't have any of those, these are the settings that we require. So RTK quality, Bot rate 57600, and then NEMA messages, GGA, GSA, and RMC on, and then turn off any tilt compensation settings. And here's the John Deere GPS configuration for Starfire 3000, 6000, and even the new 7000 globes. Um, just a note on them, I know they're moving towards a more satellite-based RTK. We don't quite yet like the um, quality of GPS that it provides through satellite. It's probably fine X and Y, um, but as far as the elevation goes, it's not quite the quality that we, we would like to see yet. So we still would want you guys to either run off of your tower networks or have a base station in the field with you. Now again, you can see those settings here on this page. Um, and then we also have a John Deere programming kit, which allows you to program your globe while sitting in the tractor, you know you don't have to go out, take the globe off the scraper, put it up in the cab, uh, program your GPS, and then put it back on the uh, the scraper. You can just make a connection in the cab. Your John Deere monitor is going to sense the globe on the scraper. Make your changes if you have to change towers. Uh, make your changes and then disconnect that cable. You want to disconnect because your John Deere monitor is not going to know which globe to pull from for steering. So it just makes it easy just to it makes it easier just to disconnect and then clear that up with your John Deere screen. Trimble GPS configuration. This is all programmable. 262s, 252s, and 372s are all programmable through our monitor. If you would like, uh, you can also use the RDI screen in your um, you know Pro 700 and Pro 1200 screens um, to do this, but um, if you would like, you can use Ag Remote. You do have to have a hardwired connection to the screen. There is setup and there is a guide to help you with this on stdrain.com. Um, so make sure you hardwire your GPS from the, the receiver uh, to the computer before you use Ag Remote. Ag Leader, the 65 and 7500s, these are all programmable as well. Uh, actually, through through wireless or through Wi-Fi, you can use your phone or the SD drain monitor to do so. We do have a cheat sheet on how to do this. It does take a little bit to get it set up, but once you can connect wirelessly, it's kind of nice to be able to just do that quickly. Also, if you want to hardwire and program it through our computer, through Novatel Config, you can do that as well. It doesn't work quite as well with the 7500s. I would recommend just using the Wi-Fi or the, the wireless programming method. The 6500s, the, wire, the wired works pretty well. So if you have 6500s, just connect using Novatel config. And we do have cheat sheets on all of these as well. Okay, starting the program, I'm actually going to get into SD drain ditch. So for guys at home, just double click on the SD drain ditch icon on your desktop. Hit agree on the window that pops up, and it's going to bring you to this first page, which is all of your file maintenance. So you've got grower, farm, and field. Uh, grower is most likely going to stay with the owner's name. 
farm, you might have a couple different farm names in here. If you've, if you've got a couple different, maybe customers or guys that use this system. Fields, these are gonna be all of the fields that you guys um, are ditching in. Every time that you enter a new field, hit the plus button and just add a new field to the dropdown list. It makes data management a whole lot easier when you do that. On the right side of the screen, you're gonna see all of the projects that you've been working on throughout this field. Each day when you come back to continue ditching, you can keep clicking on the previous date that you were working on. You don't have to keep clicking new project. New project is mostly for guys if you are starting you know, afresh that year. Um, you can click new project to make a new, new date. But if you're coming back the next day to work on the same field, I recommend just clicking on that, that previous date. So new project, hit continue. On this page, uh, this is going to be your layers page where you can load guidance lines, elevation maps, and background images. So I click on guidance. This is I have a pre-planned uh, map in here, so I'm actually just going to load those up. I've got ditch lines, as you can see up here. I've got elevations, and this is more for just demonstration purposes. Um, I've got an elevation map, uh, which is used or which is made using lidar data, uh, and it comes out as a .grd file. My background image is going to be a BMP. And this is just an example. Uh, I'm going to use, um, let's, yeah, let's use our watersheds map. You can see how that kind of looks uh, up above. I'll talk about how to read these a little bit later. Benchmarks, if you're using benchmarks, you can load those or boundaries um, as well. But most guys just stick to these, maybe actually just mostly the elevation and the background layers. Start project. So that'll bring you to your main working screen. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around this screen and kind of show you guys what each function does um, and just explain the different buttons and numbers on the screen. In the top left corner, we've got our nudge value. All this is showing you is how far your design, your grade line is um, offset from um, the one that SD drain produces. So we're nudged a half inch down positive numbers down, so you're taking more dirt. And as you keep nudging, these nudge arrows, so these are gonna be your nudge arrows, you're gonna, you're gonna push your grade line down. So I'm six and a half inches nudged down, and you can use that to cut more or less dirt. If you nudge up, bottom buttons, you're gonna see yellow up here. Those are fill areas. Um, and like we saw before, the green, that's gonna be cut areas. We'll get back to that half inch offset. Um, and that's a DGL offset. Actually, it's a defaulted offset number. I will explain that setting later. Just below that, we do have a, um, a couple numbers here. This is your backslope um, indicator. It's showing you that your backslope is on at the current state. If you want to turn that off, you can go to your window button. This button right here is going to give you three options. You have a 3D map view, a back profile, view and the side profile. What's displayed below right now is your side profile. If you click on back profile, you're going to see your back sloping window open up. Uh, and then you'll have your back slope in here when you're actually operating, you'll be able to see it. Uh, your slope ratio, this is going to control the slope or the ratio at which your back slope is uh, graded. So 1 to 40, I'm sorry, 1 to that negative. So it's a, back, it's a, it's a negative back slope. So you're actually doing like a a road, you know, you're creating the shoulder of the road. Uh, but if you go like a positive one to 40, uh, that's going to give you a nice back slope coming out of your ditch. Below that, you've got the on off button. I recommend guys back sloping with your, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, cutting your ditches with your back slope off. That just makes it easier. Because what happens if you move too far left and right of your original survey down your ditch bottom, it's going to move into your back sloping zone and it'll actually lift the blade up uh, you might not realize it and then uh, sometimes guys get frustrated because they think that their blade isn't controlling to where it should so just leave this off if you're a more a newer user typically guys will run it that way so i'm actually going to minimize my back profile and just have my side profile displayed you can see here um, you've got elevation on the left there is a legend on the bottom showing you cut yards fill yards a length of that ditch, and then your, what your minimum, minimum slope setting is. 
we recommend guys run at least a 0.05 if you can. Um, I believe the curvature of the earth is about a 0.03. So if you can run anything above a 0.03, uh, you're doing good. So I know some guys are in super flat areas where water doesn't move very fast. Just, you know, adjust that and see, try, try to, you know, just get water moving as fast as you can. So that's your, again, window button and how you bring up your back profile, side profile, uh, 3D map. If you have a .grd file loaded, like we talked about in the previous uh, layers tab, you can load a preview or a 3D map of your, of your field. You can exaggerate the depressions by using the slider. You can see as I move that slider up and down, I'm exaggerating the elevations. This helps you guys see depressions and stuff a little bit easier. But that is the 3D function. I'm gonna go back to overhead map. One thing about the 3D function, if you have that map up, it uh, shows out when you're driving, it'll do it as a heads up display. So it'll always point, the top of the screen is always the direction that you're going. Um, so whether you have the map um, with the, uh, you know, making the, the 3D more pronounced or not more pronounced, if you ever wanted to have a heads up display instead of a north up display on the top, uh, that's how you would do it. As soon as you turn off your 3D display, and then just go back to the overhead map. That's always going to be a north up um, display on where you're going. Yeah, yep. So the button to the right of your window button, this is what we call the window button, is going to be your cut function button. So we have design, pass, and single. These are three different cut modes that you guys can utilize as you're cutting the dirt in your ditch. I'll explain these a little more later with a video just on how they work. But single is going to take everything out at once. So there aren't any cut lines. Pass is going to take out, you know, either, or actually it's going to cut to the desired pass that you want to cut to. So see if I nudge down here. We've got a bunch of different passes, pass lines now. So P1, 2, 3, 4, pass 5. Uh, you can actually select which pass line you want to cut to versus the other functions like design. Uh, what design's going to do is going to take out one pass at a time if you're in D times one, two passes at a time in D times two, or three if you're in D times three. And it's going to stair step. And I do have some videos showing you on how these work. So we have design, pass, and single. The button in the center here, this is your flagging feature. If you guys want to flag out or mark different things as you're driving throughout the field, you can use this feature. Uh, you can name them different things that you might want to you want to see, like random object or uh, I don't know, big rock or something like that. You can mark out uh, different things in that overhead map and then go back later to either pick them up, you know, or fix that location. So that is the flagging button. The bottom right corner, we do have the edit window. So I'm going to click on this, and what this allows you to do is actually edit um, your ditch line that you're working on. Uh, I'm going to grab a different one here quick. We're actually going to display. I'm going to show you how you can use this edit window. So here's our ditch line. This is our survey. I'm going to go to edit. And now I can actually drag around this bottom side profile. So I'm going to drag it over here. And what I'm going to use this edit window for is to actually fill in a depression versus cutting out. In this example, let's just say I surveyed through a pothole where water collects. And instead of cutting out this backside and draining it, I'm gonna actually try and fill this area in. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place an X on top of this hill and, and I'm gonna click over here to grab the last data point over here. I'm gonna hit preview. Now you can see I've got a yellow fill area versus a green cut in this location. And now we're actually filling in 14 yards uh, and only cutting 27.7. It's just a guesstimate. Obviously it takes a lot more dirt to usually fill in a pothole than it does you cut it out. So it's up to you to use this. That's just a quick example of, of what to do here. Uh, you can undo that if you want to switch your settings back uh, and then hit done editing when you're when you're done changing that, that ditch. If you want to switch your max grade, so let's just say you've got an area that washes out 
I'm going to find a ditch here that might make a little more sense showing you guys that. Okay, here, this one might work. I'm going to go to the edit window and then I'm going to change my max grade. Let's just say at the beginning, beginning of this ditch, this is a potential area for washout. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to limit my max grade. Actually, it's going to take a while to do that, but let's just see what happens here. Okay, so once you get your max grade to a certain point, you can see over here on the left side of my side profile that it's changing the way that this ditch is designed or cut out. So if you know of a max grade that you want to limit your uh, ditch creation to, um, you can just type in that max grade and then SD drain is going to cut every ditch to those specs. So max grade, we'll just keep going down. So maybe a 0 0.4, 0 0.3. Now you have a gradual slope from this point to this point. Again, uh, just another tool that you guys can use to, to design your ditches. I'm gonna hit done editing or cancel. I'll just hit cancel. Then we'll leave the, the edit window. In the bottom right corner, we have settings. If you click on this, it's gonna bring you to a bunch of different windows and we will go through these uh, one by one. But above settings, we've got line. This is your line menu. It keeps track of all of your ditch lines in the above overhead. So if you click on them up here, you can select them in the in the graph below. And you can click on this world or, uh, and you can actually see what that ditch line looks like. Um, and then if you click on the graph again, it's gonna bring you back to your overhead. Okay, we then have the eyeball button. And what this does is it'll either show or hide ditch lines so surveys that you might not want to use and you don't want in view of your overhead you can hide those lines so let's just say if i click on this longer ditch line right here and i click the eyeball it's going to actually hide that ditch uh, if you want to bring it back up because you do want to use it just click the eyeball again and it's going to bring that ditch line back up the pencil you can use to name or edit ditch parameters so the name polyline 10, you can actually name your ditches if you would like. It's getting into a little more detail, um, but just some stuff that you can change here. Cancel. Um, and then uh, this will actually find this, this magnifying glass will actually find the current ditch that you're selected to. So let's just say you click on one of these. Uh, you can then go to the um, magnifying glass here and there it found this ditch that I'm actually selected on. Uh, you've got this G here for guidance lines. These are all guidance lines that I have loaded. You will have survey lines, so it'll be an S. Um, once you um, actually run a survey. Again, these are all guidance lines that were pre-planned through ADMS. The three dot bubble over here, this is for columns. Uh, that you want to see so whether or not you want to see your the name the dgl the min grade max grade you can check and uncheck those for all the info that you want to see in your edit window so that is the line menu i'm going to go ahead and exit out of that above the line menu we've got speed indicator um, actually it's an editable window that you guys can that can pick the data that you want to see um, go ahead and select from the list anything you want to have displayed in, in this area, this area, uh, in this bar, also in the top left bar as well. You guys can edit those windows and select the data that you want to see. We've got auto disable button. This is your on off button for when you, when you actually want to start cutting. So as soon as you've completed a survey, you will tap this button on and then you will engage your tractor's hydraulic. Zoom out and zoom in, do exactly what they say. They're just gonna zoom in and zoom out on the map. Start survey in the top right corner. This is where uh, you'll drive either to the bottom or top of the ditch. Hit start survey. Um, if you have survey both directions checked on, it'll ask you, are you surveying to the outlet or from the outlet? And then you make that decision and then you'll drive your survey. 
then top right corner will turn, you'll click stop survey. And then you'll, again, like we talked about, turn auto enabled on and you will start cutting your ditch. Just to the left of the start survey button is GPS acquired. This is the actual live data coming from your receiver. Um, and it just gives you a live reading of where your globe is actually sitting. So if you need to shoot elevations or culvert for, culverts for some reason, uh, you can go place your blade on the culvert, read the elevation, and um, yeah, just a way to gather information as you're doing ditch design. Top middle, you've got a light bar. This just shows you how far left and right you are of your survey. Uh, we want to keep you within your survey that you ran. You're, you're out of range of your survey. Um, the auto disable button is going to turn yellow and it'll say out of range. So just make sure if you're questioning where you are, you can obviously see your cursor in relation to your survey, but also we give you a light bar above. Moving on to the settings button in the bottom right corner, we've got a, a bunch of different buttons here. Uh, one thing about the settings button, it only brings you to two locations. So if you're lost, if you've been clicking around in your screen and you don't know where you went, just click the bottom right corner. This is your main screen and settings button. That's the only two places it'll take you. So if we're, let's just say we're in profile, uh, you don't know how to get out of here, just click the bottom right button back to your main screen. Above that, we've got min close. It's gonna minimize SD ditch, close it, or completely close it and shut down the computer. So if you need to go back to the desktop for some reason, you can either minimize or close the program. And if you're done for the day, you can click shut down and it will shut all of your, your program down and shut your computer off. Above that, we have an elevation button. This is used to cycle between the different maps that you have selected. You do have to have maps loaded in order to see this button. Otherwise, it just says no image available uh, in this space. When you're operating and you have auto enabled, so you're actually actively cutting your ditch, that same elevation or map selector button will be in the bottom right corner. We don't want you changing settings while you're operating. So we make that the map selector button on the bottom right corner. Again, click that to switch between elevation and background maps. Above that, we've got program. I'm going to go to profile first. These are going to be all of your ditch settings or your side profile settings. As you tap on the verbiage to the left, uh, you'll get a definition in the right uh, white text box. So minimum grade, the minimum amount um, of grade that you want to allow on every ditch, as well as the maximum grade. Below that, we've got pass depth. This is the amount of dirt that each of those lines represents. So two inches of dirt uh, in this case. Um, and that refers to design um, D times one, two, or three. So D times one would be two inches of cut. D times two is four. D times three is six inches. So just set that to a number that is going to work well with your machine and, and tractor combination. DGL offset, this is an automatic uh, offset that is set when you uh, get done with a survey. It's automatically going to apply an offset. So in this case, it's a half inch extra dirt that it's going to take out. Um, so in areas, I'm just going to pull this up. In areas like this, where there's probably not a lot of dirt to take out, it's still going to take out uh, in a half inch dirt. So the, line, so the red line, so the red line on this is going to be your design grade line and then the half inch below is going to be your design grade line offset but that's your the, your final cut line yep correct yep and then we've got a uh, large nudge and small nudge you can set these values again these this is that indicator on the left with the arrows so this indicator right here is going to be your large nudge or your nudge button um, but then you've got a large nudge is the large shape and a, your small nudge is going to be the smaller triangle. Cut beyond profile. You can check this on. All this does is it'll extend an imaginary line 100 feet before and after your survey. So at the locations that you hit start and stop survey, uh, it's going to create a fake profile set to your minimum grade. So in this case, it's a 0.05. 
And that just allows you to cut beyond your survey for 100 feet. This is nice, or it works nice coming up to culverts. So let's just say you can't survey or get the front of your tractor all the way up to a culvert. Um, you can turn around, back your scraper up, and then actually cut a, a minimum grade, you know, that distance to make sure that water at least flows in that general direction. Survey both directions. This will allow you to survey to the outlet or from the outlet. Uh, it'll ask you a question, are you surveying to or from the outlet? And you make that selection every time you hit start survey. So it's your job to know the, the general direction that your water flows, which is why I think that maps are so critical, uh, especially in new ground. Um, so survey both directions, make sure that's checked on if you wanna do that. Laser level, this is for, for cutting uh, more, uh, a lot of guys use it for cutting flat pads or, or like for, for bin sites, if they're building, putting up a bin. Um, if you're build, building a shop, guys will use SD drain to level out that area as well. So check laser level on. What happens is, is actually it's going to get rid of your certain settings up here, and then you'll just set a grade uh, and it's going to cut that whole ditch as a laser grade. Uh, you can still survey in an S if you want, you can survey in a circle if you want. Um, but it's still going to cut at whatever grade you set to when you've got laser level on. Next, we have machine settings. These are going to be all of your uh, typical setup measurements. So blade to ground, GPS height, um, and you can click on them and see pictures of what they actually look like or where we want you to measure. For the blade to ground, if you have your RTK GPS set up and running, you can actually click this calculator and it's going to walk you through a wizard on how to set up your blade to ground. GPS height, this is just something you measure with a tape measure from the blade up to where your, your globe is. If you're running like John Deere globes, I usually measure up to where the yellow meets the green. Uh, Trimble globes, I usually measure, measure about halfway on the receiver, uh, the receiver thickness. GPS offset fore aft, again, you make this uh, measurement with your tape measure, just measure where the blade is in regards to your, your receiver position. Left and right, just make sure you measure that as well. Most scrapers are positioned at zero, so usually you don't have to measure this one. Blade width, again, put your blade width in, that way we know what your or where your scraper is behind uh, as you're, you're cutting your ditch. next section is ditch settings. These are all of your, your ditch width parameters or your working width parameters. When you're using, when you're not using backslope, SD drain is going to be using your ditch width. So this is the ditch bottom. Uh, this is where your, you know, the bottom of your ditch is going to be. If you have backsloping on, it doesn't use ditch width. It uses uh, backslope ditch width and also your backslope width. So backslope is going to be from your ditch, uh, backslope ditch width bottom out a certain distance. And then your backslope ditch width is going to be the ditch bottom. So you'll set those accordingly to how you want to see your backslope or how wide you want your backslope to be. Backslope grade, you can set that in here if you want. That's just that ratio that we use. So it's always a one to something, whatever number is in here. So this is a one to 40 ratio. That's also the button over here. If I bring up my back profile window, this is that same button right here. Below that, we've got backslope surveying. I'll, I'll go through this with a video, but it just allows you to survey the backslope elevations versus just cutting a static uh, backslope grade. It works well. It's more for guys in the rolling hills country where your backslope is changing about every 10 feet. Um, you can survey your backslope and actually get a, an actual read of what your, or what or where uh, your backslope should uh, be set to. Backslope mirroring, again, it just, uh, you survey one side of your backslope and it mirrors it to the opposite. Parabolic ditch, this was a new feature added for guys who want to cut parabolic ditches for waterways. Check that on, and it's going to make a U-shaped ditch. Um, versus a V-shaped ditch. 
So you'll then set your depth at half back slope. Um, again, there is a setup guide on how to do the math to find this number. Go on to sddrain.com. There should be a help, help guide uh, to show you how to set up your parabolic ditch settings. Next is the support page. This just has all of your registration information. So your name, uh, company, you know, system ID, um, product version. Um, if you do have questions, again, we've got a, a scan, a QR code here that you can scan with your phone. It'll bring you to sddrain.com slash support, uh, the, the FAQ page. Again, on here, we've got online help. This is gonna be the team viewer app that we use that we can actually log into your screen. So you're going to get your ID and password from this, and you will give us that ID and password. Check for updates. Again, do this once a year or just once before you start ditching um, to get the latest version of SD Drain. You have to have this connected to the internet to work. Any really anything on this page, or well, I should say the online help and the check for updates. You will need internet to work. License agreement if you're bored. Uh, the manual. Um, you can read that to get information on things that you might have questions on. It's just a PDF version that pops up. You can search or look for things that you might want to know about SD Drain. Export. So there's two different export functions. We've got GPS log and project. So the GPS log is going to export uh, GPS data that you've collected with a feature that we have, which is called your visual logging tool. And what guys use this for is actually map creation. They'll go through their field, they'll drive, you know, 35 foot spacings if they can, um, and you'll collect your elevation data or just your GPS data. And then you can export that log using this button right here. Above that, we've got project. This is how you'll export your actual raw data from, um, from SD Drain. And I have an example on how to load these maps up on Google Earth later. That way you can have a printable version of all of the ditch lines that you did in a certain field. Next is our visual menu. The far left we have graph. And all this, all this menu does is allow you to change colors of everything that you see on your side profile. So if you don't like the color of your ground line, the grade line, fill area, cut area, you can change that. So fill area, I'm just going to make this blue. You can see there we've got fill. Uh, and then you can, that, that will change as you're operating. Cut area, so you can change that. If you don't like the green, you can do that. GPS indicator, if you want to see a different color GPS indicator, we can do that as well. Line width uh, and stuff like that. If you increase or decrease these, you can see how those change on your side profile. Indicator size, you can make that blade indicator larger or smaller by changing these numbers. Your graph is going to be hidden, full size, or minimal size. You get a little more information about your line if you click the full size, but it's more so just colors and what's what. Minimal size gives you what I think is all you need to have displayed, you know, as info that you might want to see. Cut, cut yards, fill yards, length, and what your min slope is set to. If you want to reset these settings back to defaults, click this little reset button in the bottom right, hit yes, and now we're back to our, our default setting. Indicator bar, we've got two different types of indicator bars. We've got the, the vertical one, which is your nut, which is includes your nudge arrows, but it's also an indicator as well. And then a horizontal bar, which is your light bar up on top. I recommend not changing any of these settings. The only thing that I really want to touch on down here is going to be your colorblind friendly option uh, for guys uh, who need that. It will turn the indicator colors from green, red, and yellow to a gray scale. You'll see different shades of gray with each different uh, indication. The horizontal bar is going to be this. You can set your spacing on your light bar up on top. Typically, guys will just run defaults on. The map, bun map button is next. We've got, again, just lines and, and colors that you might want to see differently. These are going to be the lines that are 
It's your survey lines, your ditch lines, and stuff like that that you want to see on your overhead map. You can change the width of that as well. Bottom here, so GPS off screen options. So as your cursor drives off the overhead map on top, you can either pan to recenter on cursor, lock at the current extents, and your cursor will just disappear and it'll come back once you're, you're in view of your ditches again, or you can zoom to the extents of your project. So it will always zoom out to show everything in view. Usually guys just leave this on pan to recenter, which is default. Your GPS symbol in the top here, you can see how this changes. That's just your indicator on where you're located throughout the field. So change that size, that, that color. You can change the outline if you'd like. Then your 3D size as well. Again, to reset back to defaults is the reset map settings button down here. Units, if you guys want to see different units show up, uh, like kilometers per hour or meters uh, for your, your altitude, you can do that as well. Again, this page, uh, typically guys will just run defaults, but if you're in a different area and you like to read in different units, you can change those to what you'd like to see. Flagging and logging, this is gonna be our flagging feature. Uh, you can check mark, or I'm sorry, you can check mark the show manual flags button and it will display that button in the middle of your side profile, which is right here. This is that flagging button. You can name them, you know, type in a name that you want to see um, show up um, and stuff like that. You can change the colors. And below that, we've got enable. This is your visual logging tool. So if you check this on, it's going to actually record all of the GPS data as soon as you're exceeding your minimum recording speed. So set the speed. Um, I would set it a little bit slower than what you want to record at. That way, when you go fast enough, it will start recording that GPS data. This coincides with your export GPS log tool. Next, we have DAC, so DAC control we'll go through first. All this is showing is your connection status to your controller. If you're running a hardwired controller, so you're actually connected to the monitor, you will have serial selected. You'll have the appropriate COM port connected, uh, which changes with each monitor and configuration. So we do have help guides on how to set up all those on our website. But under the status here, you'll see DAC uh, detected when your controller is connected. And you do have to hit the plus or the play button uh, in order to attempt to connect. If you're running wireless, you'll have to check the wireless button right here. And this is just going to display an IP port, IP address, and a port number. Then just hit the play button and you should see DAC detected above you. DAC data is a page. All it does is display the slope or mostly the slope sensor data that's coming in um, on your controller. If you've got a joystick, you can see when you're clicking a button, you can see the command it sends uh, in this area as well. But most of the time you'll see just DAC data, or I mean, slope sensor data coming in, the, coming in on this. So your pitch and roll messages will show in this area. DAC settings, this page is more for setup and then you probably won't come back to it. But DAC speed is a minimum speed required for our controller to take over. Deadband amount, you guys won't change this. A zero is typically default. It's just the amount of deviation between elevation in order for a command to be sent. I'll leave that at zero. Joystick override, this allows your joystick to disable control as soon as you hit the up button. Um, so it's just nice for guys running external valves with a joystick. Um, you can click the up, up button and it will. Um, automatically disable control. Setting up on out of range, uh, as soon as you turn out of your ditch bottom, um, it will lift the blade of the scraper up. Slope correction, you probably won't be using that. Uh, let's see here. So slope sensor, again, if you guys are running a slope sensor, you'll have slope sensor checked, pitch roll messages, and probably roll control for guys controlling um, 
a, a second hydraulic, so a, a roll. So like on a box blade, you can control the tilt or at the angle at which it's cutting. So that would be your roll control. If you're just using indicator only, you'll most likely just have slope sensor and then pitch and roll messages checked. You've got a certain amount of certain joystick running, either a can joystick or an analog joystick, you'll have one of these selected as well. That config, I'll go through that later. GPS control, this is a page to see your GPS uh, connection to make sure that it's it's good. Uh, SD drain will automatically connect every time you start the program. So it's not like you need to, and it's not like you need to go into these uh, pages to make sure things are connected. It's just if you have issues with connection, you can come in here to check what's going on. So status should say GPS detected. And again, just like DAC control, uh, GPS control works the same way. Wired connections will be that serial, the appropriate COM port, baud rate, and then hit the start button and you'll see GPS detected. If you're running the wireless controller or wireless setup, you want to make sure wireless is selected and then hit start and you'll see GPS detected as well. You'll see a bit of information in this big open white spot and that'll show you um, the NEMA messages coming into your program. GPS data. This page will show you all of the actual data broken up into uh, you know, what you actually want to see. So diff age, number of satellites, and fixed quality. Those are probably the three uh, biggest pieces of data that we ask guys more for troubleshooting. You know, what's going on? Is your diff age climbing? You have low satellite count, you have fixed fixed quality issues. So this page you can go to if, if you're trying to troubleshoot some things. Your diff age should never go above five seconds. If it does, I would recommend switching to a new tower or putting a base station in the field. Number of satellites, again, that should probably be above. Usually it's it's above, I don't know, like above 10, you know, 12 to 15 sometimes. Um, with the PX5R, you do get up to, I believe, 35 satellites. Fixed quality should always be RTK fix. If it switches between RTK fix to, say, RTK float or diff GPS, uh, SD drain will give you an error. And then you can go to this page to see what's going on. Satellites, this just shows you a list, list of the satellites that are uh, being used. It only shows the GPS satellites. It doesn't show any of the uh, other four constellations. So you don't see all of them in here. Uh, that's more so in your data page. Criteria, we're not going to go there. It's for tech, tech support, for technical help only. Benchmarks, we've got two different types of benchmarks that you can use. The map benchmark is going to help you guys uh, correct your maps just in case. For some reason, they are off. So let's just say your cursor is sitting, or you're physically sitting in the bottom of a ditch, but your cursor is like 30 feet shifted east. You can use this map benchmark to move your map back to the correct location. The GPS benchmark is used for guys who want to come back the next day and not have to resurvey their three mile long ditch. Uh, they can set a GPS benchmark. This I would say is, not always recommended. I would just say go resurvey that ditch and then cut cut it again. And sometimes guys will um, want to. They they ask if they can use the same ditch lines come next year. Uh, we just require or we recommend that you just resurvey those ditch lines, even if you're just cleaning ditches out for the year. Uh, hey, Luke. If, you, if if guys were like looking to have the uh, like export all their data from that same field, um, like if they Ditched on one day, they come back the next day. They have a portable, uh, you know, base that they throw in the field. If if they wanted to have all that Z data exactly the same, that would be one reason to like do the uh, a GPS benchmark. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. So guys, uh, and and we don't have a ton of customers that do this, but it's a function that's there if you'd like. Typically, guys will just resurvey. Uh, but if you want, uh, you can definitely use this function and it will bring all of your data back to where, where it should be. So um, I personally wouldn't use this function 
but it's definitely it's helpful to to use it if you don't want to resurvey um, your super long ditch uh, that you've been working on. So um, you'll create a GPS benchmark, and then when you come back the next day, you'll have to go back to this benchmarks page, click the the uh, um, benchmark from the list, and then hit start to correct. And you'll see this progress bar load, and then it'll say correction applied. And then you might see an X, Y, and a Z. You might see a number in each one of these, these uh, boxes, just showing you how far the benchmark actually corrected, uh, corrected your location. Yeah, the map benchmark is way more popular for the guys who are ditching. It works similar to like the, the shift key for guys for using their auto steer. Yep, yep, or the, yeah, the recenter button. Yep, it just all it does is shift your map to a certain location. And I've got a video to show you guys how that works. In the top right corner, we have project. We've got new project. If we click on that, it'll ask you, are you sure you want to start a new project? This is if you guys are switching to a different field, uh, you'll probably start a new project. Uh, hit yes. It'll bring you back to this main screen here. We got grower farm field. You'll make the proper selections, you know, add a new field. Select it, hit new project, uh, and continue. I'm actually just going to reload the one that we were just in. This one right here. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just use this one right here. So hit continue, and then start project. Um, and then this is your main working screen, and we're back here into settings. So that's the new project button. Layers, if you click on this, and let's say you forgot to load a layer, you can just quickly go back to this page, load your elevation, background, whatever uh, you were missing, and then hit Start Project. Save load settings, this is a page for guys running multiple implements. Let's say you've got a rotary ditcher, a box blade, and a scraper. All of these settings that you change will get saved to that slot as you save your settings. So if you want to save Slot four, click on slot four, type in the text box. I'm just gonna do test two. Hit enter, and I'm gonna click save settings, save the current settings to the selected slot, hit yes. And then when you wanna load each one of these, you can just easily go to test, hit load settings, and then hit yes. Settings successfully loaded, test, hit okay. And then now that's loaded all of your profile, machine, ditch settings, and stuff like that. Everything should load for that specific implement. Okay, going through the interface a little bit, we do have some editable windows that you guys can long press on uh, and then change the bit of data that you want to see. So if you want to see cut depth or your number of satellites in any of these uh, blocks uh, that are in the red squares, you can long press on those and then select from the list what you want to see on your run screen. Survey buttons, we have a couple here listed. We've got start survey, which is what you'll press at the beginning of your survey. Stop survey is when you get to the end. And then anywhere in between, if you need to pause for some reason and go around an object, you'll hit pause survey, you know, drive around the object, and then hit resume survey. Uh, where I see guys using this is if they're surveying a county ditch through an approach um, or a crossing, they will pause the survey on one side of the ditch, drive around, and then resume the survey on the opposite side. So you can see how guys can utilize those buttons, but these are your survey buttons in SD Drain Ditch. Surveying both directions. This is an example of what will pop up if you have survey both directions check marked on. In your profile settings, after you hit start survey, it's going to ask you, are you surveying to the outlet or from the outlet? You'll make that decision and then you'll go ahead and drive your survey. Once you're at the end of the survey, hit stop survey and you'll be able to cut your ditch. But it's just nice to have this option. So if you, let's say you survey a ditch going one way and it's a mile long, instead of driving back all the way to the other end of the ditch, you can just turn right around and continue your survey. Side profile, this is just showing you what your side profile, what the different colors and lines mean. On the left side, you've got elevation indicators. 
your designed grade line is going to be the one that SD drain gives you. Uh, and it'll be the colored one. So if it's red, um, or in this case, it's blue. The final grade line is where you're actually going to finish cutting at. So this is what you can control with your nudge arrows. And then your pass lines are the um, program dividing up um, the cut dirt into um, two sections of, of, of dirt that are attainable by your scraper and tractor. So whether it's two inch pass lines or one inch, whatever you set that pass, um, pass depth to be. Editing survey ditches. I didn't go through this in the program, so I think I'm just going to skip it. The auto button. This is the cut button that you have to press when you want to enable auto control. It will be red when it is off, and it will be either green or yellow when it is on. If it is yellow, that means you're outside of your ditching parameters. So your ditch width and your back slope width and stuff like that. And if it's green, you are within your ditch parameters and the blade should be cutting. Ditch cut settings, we've got um, a bunch of stuff. Actually, the two that I want to talk about are your pass depth and your DGL offset. We went through these, these a little bit, but your pass depth is what your scraper is going to cut every time you make a pass. So whether it's one inch, two inch, three inch, uh, let's say you're in design times one, it's going to take one pass at a time, which in this case would be one inch uh, with the setting we have set now. The DGL offset is going to be a default offset, um, either above or below your design grade line. All it is is either an extra amount of dirt that it's going to take out by default or um, less dirt by default. So that's up to you to set. I think you can take up to minus or plus two inches uh, either direction. Different cutting modes, we've got design, pass, and single. I do have some videos showing you how these work. Design is more of a stair step function where it will just follow the above you know, two inches of dirt along the whole ditch. Pass, you can set it to cut to a specific pass line on your side profile. And then single will just cut everything out at once. But you can still, with single, limit the amount of dirt that's taken out with your nudge arrows. I do have some videos here to show you how each function works. We are in design cut right now. You can see in my mode selector, I've got D times one, and I am stair stepping this cut up. Um, so it just takes one pass line at a time throughout the whole, whole ditch. If you switch this to Z, D times two, it would take two pass lines when you're making your pass. Um, so it's up to you. It's nice for guys to be able to switch this on the go. Just click into here, design, you know, times one, two, or three, and it will adjust as soon as you hit that button as you're cutting. Whenever you are outside of, say, areas where there's a bunch, a bunch of dirt to take out, it is going to just follow your final grade line. In this video, I did switch it to single. Um, and you can switch that on the fly as you're cutting if you would like. Um, I believe when I turn around, I switch it into design times two. So D times two, I'm going to turn around and then come back and make this second pass along this ditch. And you'll see that it's going to take out two pass lines as I cut this ditch. Um, this is on a test rig. So it does. Every once in a while, it, it, uh, you might get a little hiccup in your, your control. But here I'm taking out two lines at a time, and I am in design times two. Next, we have pass cut. In this mode, you can actually select what line you want to cut to. Again, they're numbered from the bottom up, so P1, P2, P3, P4. I selected P3 from the list, so notice my blade is only going to cut on P3 this whole time. Again, like design, when you're outside of the green areas, it's going to follow final grade line. So if you've already cut everything out, it's always going to just scrape the, the, the ditch bottom. So once we get you know over this area, it's going to follow the final grade line here as well. And then once you 
you know, get to a different area where P3 might not be suitable to cut, you can tap on this button and it will repopulate the available pass line. So if you've got seven, eight, nine uh, available, you know, you could select pass eight and it would cut to pass eight. When you move to an area where there's maybe only two pass lines available, click on pass and select pass two. Um, so you can change those as you move throughout the, the ditch. Single cut is gonna do exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna take everything in one single cut. So in this, in areas like this, it's gonna work really well. This would be an example of cleaning ditches out. You've just got a little bit of dirt to take out. When you get to areas like this, it's gonna be a lot harder to take out. Well, in this case, that's like uh, almost a foot of dirt at this location. And what you can do is actually nudge your grade line up to limit the amount of dirt that you take out. So use your nudge arrows, tap on these, and it will raise your grade line up to take you know, a suitable amount of dirt for your tractor and scraper. So here we've got, we're in single cut and it's gonna follow your grade line. So you'll make this pass turn around and you'll wanna nudge back down. And you can always see how far you've nudged with your indicator in the top left corner. In this case, I've nudged four inches up, which is a minus four inches. When I turn around, I might just nudge two more inches down and make that next pass. That is a single cut. Moving on to cutting back slope. This is the uh, transition between the ditch bottom and the field. Uh, this is your back slope area. So as you can see here, um, I've got my ditch already surveyed and I've already cut out my ditch bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my back slope function. Remember with your window button, you'll pop this side one up and then you'll turn it on. And now as you cut in your back slope area, you're going to see your blade indicator hover along your back slope. I have a slope sensor installed, but I do not have slope control or cross slope uh, controlling. That's why it's not matching this back slope grade. But if you did have control, it would match the blade to that slope ratio. Um, with indicate only, it is going to know how your blade is tilted and it's going to keep your blade out of you know, the back slope. So it's gonna help you know, avoid gouging and stuff like that as your blade or scraper rocks. Dolly scrapers, it's kind of nice to have a slope sensor on because if you're doing curved ditches, they tend to want to tilt towards the inside of the turn. So as they tilt, you can actually see uh, what's happening and SD drain will will keep that blade up and out of the dirt. Well, so and it's how it's it's how the how the blade like how they measure the depth of the blade. If you don't have a slope sensor on, the depth of the blade is measured from the middle of the blade. Um, if you do have a slope sensor on, then it's going to take that calculation that you had your blade with out, and then it'll measure the depth of the blade from the outside of the blade because it actually knows what the tilt is. So that ends up how you can. Uh, reduce any kind of gouging that's happening, even if you don't have control and you do have a slope sensor on uh, a different pan scraper. Next, we'll move on to surveyed back slope. This feature is for guys in the rolling hill country. A lot of times here in the valley, our back slopes are pretty um, static, meaning they don't change a whole lot throughout the whole ditch. But if you are in the rolling hill area, you can actually survey your back slope. Notice again, I've already got my ditch bottom surveyed. I haven't cut on it yet, but I'm just turning out to actually survey my back slopes. So with back slope surveying checked on, you can go ahead, survey the ditch bottom, and then turn out to where you want your back slope to finish at. Hit start survey again, like I'm going to in the video, and then select back slope. So watch here in the video as we go. Oops, then we'll try it again here. Select back slope. Now you're going to drive this survey. So now um, you don't have to follow this guidance line here. This is just a reference to show you where you know 30 feet out is from your ditch bottom. You can drive wherever you want in this back slope area. You don't have to follow the solid line. So I'm just going to weave in and out here. You can see with my cursor. And then once you get to the end of the ditch, you can go ahead and hit stop survey. SD drain is going to automatically know what side of the ditch you surveyed. So don't worry about selecting a left or right side. Just survey the ditch bottom, turn out, 
you want to make sure you you want to get pretty close to the ends of your ditches um, with your your back slope survey. So try to drive the whole thing, uh, and then you'll turn around and you'll do the other side as well. And all you do is again get to the other side, hit start survey, and then select back slope, and you can go ahead and drive the line. I select start survey, and then I'm going to press on back slope, and then just start driving. You can do the exact same thing like I did on the other side and, and weave through, you know, in and out. I'm going to skip ahead here because all this is is a survey. So you can see how I'm not following that solid line. Get to the end of your ditch or your back slope, hit stop survey, and now you can see that this is your back slope profile on your overhead map. On the bottom right, um, this is what it looks like. Watch as I turn around. This wider side is going to flip flop. It's a directional display. So as you are heading towards the ditch, it's going to display uh, exactly how that back slope looks. So watch as I hit, I'm out of range right now to get within my back slope area. It's going to go into auto enable. And now you can see how my back slope is uh, dynamic. It's changing, you know, every foot, there's a different uh, slope ratio. And you can change, you can see that here, um, 1 to 46, 1 to 44, 1 to 43. You can see how my back slope is changing, um, but back slope surveying helps me so I don't have to change my slope ratio all the time. So I'm at a 1 to 60 now. So you can see how that really changed uh, from one end of the survey to the next. So this is your back slope, um, surveyed back slope. You then have surveyed back slope with mirroring. So the exact same, or not the exact same, but the same um, steps involved. You'll survey your ditch bottom, drive to the outside where you want your back slope to finish at. And then what you'll do is select back slope survey. And what's gonna happen, Instead of you having to survey both sides of the, the back slope, if you've got pretty uniform ditches, you can use this um, or just use it because it's going to cut the exact same back slope to the opposite side. So we'll drive again in and out, however you would like to in relation to your ditch bottom. Get to the end of your survey and you'll hit stop survey. And what's going to happen is it's going to make a replica of that back slope on the opposite side. So it can save you some time if you've got pretty uniform ditches on each side. Typically, it doesn't happen a whole lot, but it's at least in there to give you guys um, a feature to speed this process up. Moving on to parabolic ditches. So if you have plans that involve creating parabolic ditches, you can use this feature. Really what you're doing is you're creating a U-shaped ditch versus a uh, straight V-shaped ditch, um, and then you can turn this function on, check mark it on, and then you'll uh, set your depth at half back slope width um, by doing some calculations. We do have a setup guide for those calculations. Typically, it's right around 0.75 is what we found to be an average, um, but you can do those calculations yourself and then cut parabolic ditches for your waterways. I'm going to show you a video of setting up stations or surveying stations in your parabolic ditches. So typically in your plan, you might get a series of stations that you need to cut. And I'm actually going to do this in one long survey in this example. But what I would do is I would survey each station individually and then set your slope to each station individually. That way, when you move you know, onto the next one, you can just tap on them on the overhead uh, view up here. But I'm just going to do one big survey. I'm going to use the flagging feature to mark out where those stations uh, start and stop. So here, station, I marked one out. I'm going to keep on driving to the next one, and I'm going to do the same thing and flag it. Um, but instead of, like I said before, instead of uh, doing one long survey, I would break these surveys up into you know, this, so this will end up being like, I think it's three surveys or three flags that I mark out. I would survey from here to this flag, 
I would stop survey and then start survey again and survey from this flag to the next one that I mark right here. And then also uh, same from this flag up to this one. I would I would do them all in separate surveys and then I would set your your slopes or what grade that you need to attain uh, with each with each station. And then I would start cutting. Um, so really, hopefully that gives you guys kind of an example of, of how to set up those stations um, when you're cutting parabolic ditches with your plan. And then when I was talking about changing those slopes for those surveys, I would tap on the survey up above, go to the edit button, and then change that grade. Um, that min grade on the right side. Some slope sensor benefits. Um, again, like we talked about, you can control the cross slope on box blades, rotary ditchers, um, if they're capable. So feel free to take advantage of that. Go ahead and call your dealer uh, or salesman and uh, get a hold of a slope sensor. But like we talked about before, it helps to reduce gouging um, and it helps to compensate. Um, if you're in rough conditions and your blade is really rocking back and forth, like on dolly scrapers, it helps uh, with that as well. You can see in the picture here, just some demonstration of cutting a back slope with a box blade using a slope sensor. Building a level pad. This is a question that we get from guys a lot, uh, usually in the spring uh, when guys are starting building projects and they want to flatten out an area. Um, I'm actually going to show you this in the program. We will go into SD drain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this example, this ditch line right here as my example. So in order to set up, say I wanted to level out a 100 foot wide area for my shop and then also have it tapered using my back slope so like so water can run off um, past that 100 feet. I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to program. And then I'm going to go to ditch. And this is where I'm going to set up all of those parameters. So I'm going to use my back slope width and my back slope ditch width. I'm going to set my back slope ditch width to 100 feet because that's how wide I want this flat spot to be. And then my back slope width is my runoff or how far I want my water you know, the runoff area to be, I'm going to make that 35 feet just for nice uh, numbers, hit enter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to program, I'm going to go to profile, and then I'm going to turn laser level on. I will then set my grade to zero, and then hit enter. I'm going to go to main screen. You can set this grade to whatever you want that. If you want a slope on there, you can set your slope. Uh, but I'm going to make it perfectly flat. So I'll go to main screen. Now you'll see I have a perfectly flat uh, grade line right here uh, along this line. I'm then going to go to my window button, go to back profile, and I'm going to turn back sloping on. Do you guys see these extra lines that just showed up on top here? These are my parameters that I set up. So from dashed line to dashed line is 100 feet. And then from dashed line to solid line is my 35 foot uh, runoff. And in order to set a negative back slope, so you're building like a tabletop, like a uh, road, you would set this to a negative number. So only to start out, you know, a negative 25 or a negative 35 would match my back slope. So it's a foot drop from your um dashed line to solid line is how that would work so just a way that you guys can set up uh your back sloping and your your ditch to make a flat pad the other thing i was going to talk about is if a, if a contractor gives you a survey stake of the elevation that he wants to you to level the dirt to what i would do is i would drive over to that after you get your survey done i would drive over to that survey stake Put your blade right about you know level with that elevation and you'll see your blade indicator along your side profile right down in here let's say our, our blade indicator was at 904 well i would then nudge up and this is going to get you really close i would then uh, nudge up to that 904 feet and that is where 
you would you'd hit you know auto enabled and then the blade would automatically hover this whole area at 904 feet and then you can see you know how much dirt you need to move from here or there uh, to level off this area for your your building site and if you're doing a pad that's more than like 100 feet by 100 feet guys can sure utilize the back slope area by just changing that back slope to zero and making that back slope area a uh, hundred feet. So I mean, actually, you can control up to three hundred feet. You know, um, from the back slope side of the ditch all the way across, and then however far you survey. So that's another option for guys. I don't know that anybody's going to be making a pad that's that big, but um, then you're not going to be able to utilize that like crown negative slope on the back slope. But um, for guys who needed something to go wider than 100 feet say they were doing a 300 foot by 300 foot pad they could do that correct yeah if you set them up if you set both your values to 300 you have 900 feet of space across this whole plane here and if you set your slope to a zero so one to zero uh, we did the math and we made something up and it actually did I mean, one divided by zero is not possible but you can this we set it so it's flat out here so you'll have a flat back slope from the dashed line out to the solid line and so all of this area will be perfectly flat if you wanted to level this whole place out otherwise you can always run multiple surveys to do that as well that is building a level pad Save load settings, we went through that. Here's an example of what your GPS menu looks like when you actually have data coming in. This is a uh, wired example. Notice we have allow serial checked and we have COM port one selected, uh, we have, but we have GPS detected. And then below that, we've got all of our data that we see coming in. So we've got good, good, good. DGA, GSA and RMC are the three new censuses that we would like to see. And they all say good. So. This is what it looks like. Um, I know in the program I didn't have GPS coming in. But you can at least see uh, what it looks like when it's fully populated. GPS data, again, we got lots of information here that you can see what things will look like when you're actually operating. We've got RTK, RTK fix on the bottom, and then just some information on the left to look for. Uh, RTK fix, low H dot, V dot, and P dot, usually around or less than one. Um, Again, the settings that you see visible in the page are fine. And then low diff age usually hovers around two seconds. Benchmarks. So I have an example of a map benchmark, but it's pretty much the same with the GPS as well. Um, so there's two options, map or GPS. Remember the map one is for correcting your map placement. If it's off a little bit, say your cursor again is you know, not in the ditch, but you're physically sitting in the ditch, you can correct your, your map or placing an actual GPS benchmark to reference off of for your project. The map benchmark, I'm gonna just show you guys how to do this with a video. Some of my menus don't pop up because of the screen recorder, so I will try to explain them as they come. I'm gonna go to settings, I'm gonna go to GPS, I'm gonna tap on benchmarks, It'll bring me to the benchmark page. I'm going to click on map. It's going to zoom in. I actually pinched to zoom out a little bit. And then it wants me to place this crosshair where I'm actually sitting. So you'll tap on the screen. I'm sitting right here. You're going to hit OK. There'll be a screen that pops up. And you're going to click start to correct. And what's going to happen is, is this progress bar is going to load. And it's going to move my cursor from where it thinks I am to where I'm actually sitting. So that crosshair is where your scraper is actually sitting. Don't park your tractor um, in the you know the crossing or wherever your reference point is. Park the scraper globe exactly where you want to correct to. And then you'll just place that crosshair, hit OK, and then hit Start to correct. That is the map benchmark. DAC control, you've got two different examples here of what it looks like, the left one being a serial or hardwired connection and the right one being a wireless connection. All I'm showing you is, is what it looks like in the program when your controller is actually connected. 
DAC data, we have some information on what it looks like when your slope sensor in this example is giving you data into the program. You've got pitch and roll messages coming in in that bigger white uh, text box. And then you can see that actual you know, data on the left side. You've got pitch roll, uh, X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation as well. Deck settings, again, this isn't a, you, I'm not saying to check all these when you're running. It's just an example of what things might look like uh, when you are operating. So don't just go ahead and copy these check marks over, um, but just kind of showing you guys what things could look like as you're operating um, and for your setup in DAC settings. Google Earth, uh, we can export uh, your ditch projects and upload them to Google Earth. So Google Earth is a free program that you guys can download off of the, the web. But after you've done that, you'll then go into SD Drain and you will export your project. Choose a location. So we'll go to you know settings, go to program and then export and tap on project. You'll then export that data to a certain location on your computer, hit OK. Uh, wait a bit, the program will export everything. So once it's done, uh, you'll hit OK. Open up Google Earth. Um, you're gonna go to File and then select Import. You're then going to browse to the location that you stored those files. And the layer that you're going to load will be your scraper layer cut lines. It'll be a shape file. You'll click on that and hit Open. It is then going to let you choose a color that you want to display those lines. Um, you can select use a single color, select your color, whatever you want to see, and then hit OK. And then it'll ask you to save that um, file again, and you can name it whatever you want. Name it. I would name it as the farm name. Um, then hit Save. It'll save that to a location. And then now you'll get a view or a picture of what that ditch line looks like in your field. So notice that red line that's going through the yard here. This is just an example that I created to show you guys what it might look like. You can print these this overhead satellite view off. There's a print function right here. If you click on that print button, you can then add a name. There's a title that appears in the top left corner. Tap on it, add a name of you know the farm name or whatever. Uh, and then when you're in that print mode, you're going to have a save PDF or a print uh, button up here. I typically like to save them as PDFs, so I will tap that, type in the name of the farm, and save that to your desktop. And then um, you can go ahead, close Google Earth, and print off those maps to show whether it's your customer or if you're just keeping records for the farm, uh, you can do that uh, with that data. DAC connection, what to look for. Again, this is just for simple troubleshooting if you want to do some of that yourself before you give us a call or check out the manual. Um, blue light on the DAC 8000 in indicates a connection to the computer. This is all for the wireless guys. Uh, so make sure you have a blue light. The flashing green light indicates incoming data um, to your controller. So position seven should have a flashing green light if you are running, say, a John Deere Globe or Trimble or Ag Leader. Those are all typically ran wireless. Um, so you should have data coming in on that position seven LED. Otherwise, um, if it's not, you've probably got a connection issue somewhere. I would check for broken wires, make sure you've got power on your globe um, and stuff like that. So broken wires, bent pins, make sure connectors are in the correct way. Um, I've had a, a bunch of guys connect those John Deere connectors. Uh, I shouldn't say John Deere, those, those 12 pin Deutsch connectors, backwards they are keyed so make sure you get those connectors in the right direction but other than that the stuff below just disregard this uh, d8 router stuff we would probably go through that with you over the phone if it came to that dac basic tuning when you're in dac config what you're doing when you're tuning your controller, and you typically don't, should only have to do this once uh, for that specific tractor. If hydraulics change, uh, let's say you replace some of the electronics or the valve parts, you may have to do this again. But typically, it's a one-time deal uh, done as long as you use the same tractor and, and implement. Um, so the first thing you'll do is select your config from the list. 
Uh, you'll hit open configuration just below the list. What you'll then do is you will uh, want to park in a position where you can raise and lower your blade. Tractors that are uh, that allow movement when sitting still. Um, this is a lot easier to do than with like John Deere, which requires you to be moving to use auxiliary controllers. Uh, but what you'll do is I'm going to use case as an example. You'll park somewhere. Uh, you'll enable your number one hydraulic or elevation control. And what you're doing is you're setting when you tune is what you're setting the minimum amount of voltage it takes to raise or to open the valve to move your scraper. So uh, you're setting those minimums with these sliders. And when the sliders move up and down, you're just changing the value um, that it that it sends uh, to your controller. What you want to do is just find a number that just moves your scraper, uh, and you should hardly see your scraper move. So um, find that value, and what you'll do uh, to, if you want to keep testing that value is you'll keep hitting the pulse button. So you're sending pulses or sending commands to keep moving. Uh, that value. And once you find that correct value, you'll tap the apply button, which is the point, the, it's the number. So 0. 0.55 would be an apply button and 0. 0.44. That's obviously might change depending on your value that you find. But positive is up and negative is down. It has to go in that direction. So plus has to be up and negative has to be a down movement. Once you get your minimum set, what I would do is I would go and run. Um, a test stitch, you know, so you to leave this page, you would set click set tune and then save. And then I would go out, do a survey and run a test stitch and see how it controls. If it's too erratic, I would slow it down by coming back to this page and adding some steps. Steps are either going to slow down or speed up the reaction of the scraper. So click on it, click a new number in for steps. If, it, if you're at 35 and it's erratic, I would just maybe add 20 steps. So go to 55. Uh, you know, save those settings. So hit set tune and save. Go to main screen and go back and continue trying to cut your ditch. And if it cuts better, um, then you're good to go. Uh, you can also uh, tune a little bit by just monitoring your hydraulics up and down. So let's say you start out at 70% flow. I would switch it, you know, up to 80% if it seems slow or if it seems too fast, go down to like 60%. We don't want to go too far. Um, with your hydraulics because then you lose a lot of the functionality uh, like when you're trying to lift your scraper to go and dump. So you can do a little bit of the tuning by just manually changing your hydraulic flow, but I would start tuning right around 70%. So, hey Luke, just to review, so you move the sliders, the your valve starts moving, then you would uh, tap on the number under the apply section. And then what that's going to do is it's going to move that new number into the above setting where it says first, right? First yep. or last, right? Yep. So it'll put it in there. And then uh, to make sure that the final set is going to be that you you hit the set tune button and that's going to then save it as the new tune numbers. Correct. Yep. You would hit set tune and then save. Yep. Okay. Yep. And one other thing too, before you're tuning, uh, we recommend that you warm up your hydraulics. Um, so whether if it's a cold morning, uh, let everything warm up. Cycle your scraper up and down a couple times to get you know all that fluid warmed up, uh, and then do your tuning if you're going to do it in colder weather. So it's a, kind of the same thing with steering systems where uh, guys will just you know warm the tractors up and just start steering your chart. Just drive around and um, let your system warm up. Topography maps. So if you guys are looking for topography maps to load an SD drain ditch, feel free to call us and get in contact with one of our salesmen or talk to your dealer and they will find us and we will get you guys some maps. Uh, as long as you have LIDAR or some available, like if you collected the data, um, if you've got some data or if you've got LIDAR in your area, we can use that. Uh, I'll explain a little bit on how to read these. You do need a couple maps, you know, to read uh, how the water is flowing throughout the field. Typically, if you order maps through us, the red is going to be lower areas in the field, and then the purples and blues will be higher areas. 
Um, these maps are not the same field, uh, but you typically need a uh, an elevation map to help read a watersheds map. So the, this is your watersheds and flow depressions map on the left, and then this is a elevation map with a uh, flow depressions overlaid on top. So typically what's happening in this right picture is that water is flowing from the southwest to the northeast in this field. Um, and you can tell obviously by the colors, but you can see all the ditch lines all kind of um, flow in that direction. Um, so when you're cutting ditches, I would just go out here and cut all of your big solid lines. Um, these are your main flow depression lines or major flow depression lines. You don't necessarily have to do all these little ones. These are minor flow depression lines. So as God here, I would just start scraping all of these uh, ditch lines. Your watersheds map uh, on the left here, your watersheds are all where the colors meet. So these are actually, these are probably the high points in your field. So where the blue and the green meet, that's a high point. Um, and you can see based off of where this ditch goes, it probably all floats and flows up to the northeast corner of this, this uh, watershed area. So the blue is gonna probably flow straight north. Um, that's why it's helpful to have that elevation map so you can see what the elevation changes are and then you can tell where your watersheds and ditches flow in that area. So here's an example of a slope sensor controlling the tilt on a Wolverine. So you can see we're cutting our back slope in this ditch and uh, it's it's holding that machine at a certain slope. So make sure you mount it uh, like the sticker shows. So this side up and this pointing forward, your connector will plug in to the back of the slope sensor. And this needs to move one to one with the blade. So if you're going to purchase one and mount it, make sure that it moves exactly the same way that your GPS will does.